What's up, family? God bless you all. Can you guys hear me? If you guys can hear me, put a fire emoji in the chat so I know you guys can hear me. What's up, family? God bless you all. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I guess you guys can't hear me. <laughs> Just drinking my soda water. Perrier peach. It's fire. Eating some uh, some mixed nuts, some peanuts, almonds, cashews, basil nuts, and pecans, which is fire too. A nice little snack. So <clears throat> I wanted to get on here and talk about Ryan Garcia and um, everything I see that he's going through, uh, and just and just you know speak about what I feel and the spirit what I what the Lord's put on my heart for him. I want to go over the video that I found actually on the bref the Breakfast Club. That has uh, pretty much everything, I guess, that he's going through, like the video footage, the um, the audio, all that. So we could talk about that and just, um, and we pray for him. I want to pray for him. <clears throat> I want to pray for him, so don't get off. Also, if you guys don't already know, um, we just posted uh, the video of me going in and interviewing the imam. Interviewing the imam. Inter interviewing the imam. Yes, I said it right. Interviewing the imam. So make sure to go check out that video. Um, but yeah, man, God is good. Some important announcements. First, before we get over some announcements. And no, these are not the honey roasted cashews. These are the plain Janes. Plain Jane nuts. Mixed nuts. Plain Jane. It's pretty fire. Plant-based protein. Really good for you. All right, we're going to talk about uh, some things. But I want to know where you're from. Where are you guys from? City and state, where you guys from, where you guys from, where you guys from. I'm going to give some shout outs if you have any ministries that you're part of. Maybe you might be part of a ministry or you might be a pastor of a ministry. Shout out your ministry. I'm going to give some shout outs. Houston, Texas, Yuma, Arizona, Boise, Idaho, Charlotte. Man, it's moving quick now. Houston, Los Angeles. Um, we got Long Island in the house. We got Santa Ana, Miami. Memphis, Tennessee, San Jose, Chicago, Massive. Man, there's a lot of different places. Belgium, Fresno. Praise the Lord, man. If you're from out of the country, put that country that you're from. Where are you from out of the country? LA, Colorado, Tampa, Florida. Nebraska, Massachusetts, Texas, DFW, San Antonio, Kansas. Praise God. San Fran, Germany, North Ireland, Grenada, El Salvador, Hungary, Ireland, Sweden. Kuwait, wow. Kuwait in the house. Please come to Belgium. I would love to. Mexico, Mexico. Canada in the house. More Belgium. We got Indiana. Hallelujah. Sweden, Jamaica. Just want to let you guys know right now, I do have monitors Moderate, <laughs> I said monitors, moderators on the chat, and these moderators will block you if you start coming with some craziness. New Zealand, just want to let you guys know I do not manage my social media, so if you try to reach out to me, I probably can't get back to you. Um, the best way to get in contact with me is to join the um, the ROC um, International Community on School. And get plugged into the Leadership School of Revival. I do lives every Monday. Every Monday, I get on Zoom Live with those who are part of the um, LSOR, Leadership School of Revival. And we get um, active, man. We get into the Word. We get into prayer. Um, we just finished up a five-day uh, fast where we woke up at five in the morning. Um, well, Eastern Standard Time. Some in Cali woke up at two. Others in, at four. Um, if you want to sign up. It's in the description of every single one of my YouTube videos. So I know this is YouTube live. It's in the description of every single one of my YouTube videos. 
Um, praise God, Suze, your ministry has changed my life. Praise God. If this ministry has blessed you, I want you guys to put some testimonies right now real quick. How, how, you know, however this ministry has blessed you, if it's from the videos, just watching them, you know, just watching the videos, if it's blessed you, if it's, if you're part of school, if you're part of um, anything, just, you know, having to do with the rock, the ROC and my, um, my personal ministry, if it's blessed you, just let, let, let me know testimony. I quit weed for Jesus. Praise God. Come on. Let me, let me, let me, let me hear what God did through this ministry to help you. Oh, so this ministry started your walk with God in your 16. Praise God. School and SLR. Amen. Amen. Sally. Deliverance. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This ministry made me begin my lifestyle of evangelism. Many uh changed so many lives. Praise God. Family revival. Ever since we found the ministry, I quit porn and I am free. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. One. Amen. Conejo. From your videos. God has got me. You got closer to God. Praise God. <coughs> God, amen. Amen. Stop smoking weed for God. Amen. Shot me into my calling. Amen, Jaden. Your testimony brought me to tears. Amen, Nova. Amen. Tuesday and Saturday service. I'm 52 and I love evangelizing. Amen. Amen. The shirt is fire. I like the shirt. If you like the shirt, put a fire. <coughs> put a fire emoji. You know when you eat peanuts and it gets stuck in your throat? I, I hate that. But yeah, if 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 um <clears throat> if you rock with a shirt, put a fire emoji. I'll put y'all on where to get it. I'll put y'all on. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> it, it was about, with the shirt and the shorts, it was about $10 to $15 in total. Shout out to Sheen. <laughs> it's an app. Really cheap clothing. Really cheap. Hallelujah. And I don't know why so many people commenting on my hair, man. Why? I can't live my life. People be commenting, why did you change your hair? It looks better than another one. It's like, bro, I love you. God bless you. But dang, can I live? <laughs> people be like, change your hairstyle. I don't like it. Like, dang, bro. I'm out here preaching the gospel, man. Come on, Pastor Benji. Let him know, man. I can't be dripped out, man. Come on, man. Dang, man. You look A-Rab now. I always look A-Rab. What you talking about? <laughs> People don't know where I'm from. The Bible says he does not judge the outer appearance. It's the heart, man. It's the inner. Your hair is fire, bro. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for saying the slick back is fire. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Nice cut. Come on, man. Thank you. See the edification, the love. Come on. Thank you. We have the same hair. Amen. Daniel, come on. Slick back. Come on. We're doing it for the kingdom. I appreciate the love, man. Dang. Faded up, bro. There it goes again. There it goes again. <laughs> The fade ain't, the fade, it, it ain't enough. Hey, I don't do it for none of y'all. I do it for, number one, my Lord and Savior, Jesus. And number two, my wife. <laughs> if she likes it, I'm Gucci. I'm cool. I ain't trying to impress no other woman. If my Heavenly Father's cool with it and my wife loves it, we good to go. That's all I need the approval of. They said, they said, they said before I had the slick back, I had the Edgar. <laughs> it had me rolling. People were like, yo, get rid of the Edgar, bro. Get rid of the Edgar. Oh, that's so funny. Someone said the fade is vain. The fade is vain. Bro, what? Bro, people be wilding with these comments, man. Wilding. I, I liked it when I was rocking the Edgar. It was hard, man. I liked it. Man, I'm going to tell you something. The way I have my hair is not going to make me more holy. I don't care if it's short, long. It doesn't matter. Again, he does not judge the outer appearance. Just like me me having a, <clears throat> rocking a chain, this remnant chain. 
this doesn't make me less holy or more holy or it don't matter man it's it just to win souls we out here trying to win souls being wise again if you start commenting some wild stuff in the, in the chat my, the moderators they gonna block you i'm telling you they ain't playing they watching they watching like like some eagles they watching like some eagles don't play around with me <laughs> And even if you comment on um, the videos on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all, all that, we got moderators who check that too, and they will delete that comment and block you, man. There's no no no, no negativity. All love, baby. All love. I appreciate it, Unknown Servant. The Edgar was definitely hard. Thank you, man. Thank you. Love y'all, man. So I want to talk about Ryan Garcia. I want to get right into it. I want to talk about Ryan Garcia right now real quick. Let me just check the live stream on my phone to make sure. And I want to play a video too. I want to give you all some updates on some other videos. We're actually going to expose Freemasonry pretty soon. Some more of it. I actually got the uh, got an interview. I actually got an interview with the uh, with the guy who went undercover in the Freemasonic Lodge like like became a Freemason, went through the rituals and all that just to expose it. Like falsely became one. Like in his heart, he didn't come in agreement. Like just did it to to ba to basically um, to expose them. I just got off of a uh, um, an interview with him. We, we recorded it. We're gonna post that soon. Crazy man, crazy the things he saw, the things that um, he recorded. He got real footage, like inside, inside. Yeah, Bo Bohemian Grove is real. It is. Um, Illuminati's real. Freemasonry is real. Um, Voodoo's real. All that stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, just elaborate on what I believe and what the Lord, where the Lord has brought me as, as far as revelation goes, where I'm at. So um, praise God, Amen. We're coming back to LA. We're coming back to San Diego and to the Bay. We actually just um, finalized everything from what I rem from what I know so far from our admin. So we'll be out there soon, man. We're going to be out there soon. Hey, man, let's get it in, man. Let's get it in. I appreciate y'all love, man, the encouragement. What I want y'all to do, let, let's do this together, man. Start liking the video. Like the video, like the video, like the video. Run up the likes so we can start getting more people on. The more likes we get, the more it pops up on people's, uh, on their YouTube. And then they'll click it. And then we could just, we could talk about everything going on with Ryan Garcia. Hey, Amen. I'll answer some questions. Put some questions in the chat. Like the videos. Look, <clears throat> like the video. Let's, let's let's run it up, man. We got, from what it looks like, we are at, am I tripping? Is that the same 91, 91 likes? Okay, we're at 149 likes. Let's run it up to like 500 likes. Come on, everybody. If everybody on here would like it up, just like it up. Like it up. Run it up. This is, Someone asked me like six, seven times, Rodney Hudson, is boxing a sin? No, it's not a sin. Just make sure you do it onto the glory of God. If you if, if you ain't spiritually mature enough to box because you're not, you haven't grown in the faith that much, don't box. And you can always train for boxing, but don't go boxing people. Because if you box people and you still got anger issues or rejection or whatever is going on, it might not be um, a friendly fight. Remember, you're, you're hitting you're hitting someone and you're getting hit. Because there are spiritual things that happen in boxing and any type of hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. But it's no problem to train for it. No problem to to hit the heavy bag, to, you know, to, to go in and just and train. And, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's good. It's good. All right. How do I know if I'm chosen or I'm called the real deal O'Neal? Um, everybody's called you're chosen when you actually make the decision to um, surrender to Jesus. It's like Isaiah, right? Isaiah went before God's throne. And, and what, what did God say? He said, um, who's going to go preach my word? He asked the question and um, Isaiah said, I'll go. The minute he made the free will decision to say, I'll go, that's when he was chosen. God does not force anybody. He chooses those who choose him. I'm going to say it again. He chooses those who choose him. So many are called to repentance. Many are called to repentance. The Bible says he wishes that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Many are called to, um, to into ministry to be to be used. That you have a destiny, you have a calling. Many are called, but you have to make the free will decision to seek God and, and grow in relationship with Him, or just stay a baby Christian for the rest of your life. 
You can stay a baby Christian for the rest of your life and be in the flesh in the outer courts, but if you want to get into the inner courts and the holies of holies and see the glory of God, the weight of, of God's glory at a level you can't imagine, then you have to seek him. That's the only way. You got to get closer and closer and closer to Jesus. So many are called, but few are chosen, meaning those who surrender to Jesus. You're chosen when you give your life to Christ and choose him. So glory be to God. <clears throat> Do angels sing? Of course. We see it in the word of God. Holy, holy, right? Holy, holy, holy. They sing before, for sure. They worship. Is watching UFC a sin? No, it's not a sin. It's your heart, man. It's your heart. If you're watching that and you're getting, and you have a spirit of anger, or let's say you idolize UFC, of course, it can be a sin. Hallelujah. Let's see what we at right now. I think we're at 217. Come on, let's run up the likes. Run up the likes so we can start the video. So we can um I could I can start playing the video I want to play. It's a really powerful one. I'll answer some questions. Any questions y'all have that I feel led by the spirit. Can the can the Holy Spirit can the Holy Spirit leave somebody? I'll answer that. Rich, is it bad to wear a cross in your chain? No, it's not not bad to wear a cross. If you idolize the cross and think the cross protects you, yes, it's bad. Anything that you think protects you, that's a physical object, is already idolatry. No physical object can protect you. Only God can. Put your faith in God. A cross, any type of chain. Chains are not demonic. Chains are not demonic. You can wear chains. You can wear clothes. You don't have to be legalistic, religious, and, and wear like a sackcloth and ashes. It, it, like just be, use wisdom. For women out there, for men out there, use wisdom. Don't be a stumbling block. And um, what was the other question? Um, can you lose the Holy Spirit? What did David say? What did the Bible say? Take not your, your presence from me. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. That's what David said to God when he was in sin, when he got caught slipping, when he, was, uh, when he messed up, you know, sleeping with Bathsheba, his friend's wife. He cried out to God, take not your, your presence from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He, he asked for that. So I do believe, according to that scripture, you can, yes, God can take the Holy Ghost from you. And I believe that it happens when you decide not to believe no more. So I'm going to give you all an example. So when it, when, it, when it comes to belief, right, it's very simple. You believe in Jesus Christ, right, in your heart and confess from your mouth and you're saved. But can you decide? I'm, I'm going to ask you guys this question. As a human, can you decide to stop believing in something? Can you believe in something one day and then decide to stop believing in something another day what's up victor amen definitely been losing weight man appreciate the love shout out to hawaii so i'm asking y'all again can you believe something and then one day decide not to believe let me give y'all an example some of y'all believed in santa claus then you find out he wasn't real you didn't believe no more some of y'all believed that your high school sweetheart or middle school was the one you're going to marry then you find out man i don't believe it no more you see what i'm saying so so santa claus high school sweetheart these are all so Santa Claus obviously is a false imaginary, imaginary being, right? Or if you if you look at the history behind it, Saint Nick, you know, it gets kind of crazy. Your high school sweetheart, they're humans. They they make mistakes. You make mistakes. You changed your mind. So yes, you can lose the Holy Spirit if you decide to stop believing, <coughs> and you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, not not believing in His conviction power no more, or just ignoring His conviction power. He's convicting you to stop sin. He's convicting you to stop. And you just say, I don't care no more because you don't want to believe no more. Yes, you can lose the Holy Ghost. I believe that wholeheartedly. You are sealed for sure. When you get when you come to Christ, you are sealed until the day of redemption. But you can break that seal if you decide to not believe. The condition is very simple. You must believe in your heart. And God will never force anybody to believe in something if they don't want to believe in it. That's not a relationship. That's like... That's like you you in high school believing that that person was your wife and then that per like that's it. You can't believe nobody else is your wife for the rest of your life no matter what. Like you see what I'm saying? You're not even married yet. So it's like it's it's kind of like a weird comparison, but I'm just trying to give you an example on how we have free will. We have free will to believe it or to believe or not to believe. But anyone who believes, truly believes in their heart will be saved. And if you believe in your heart, what are you going to do? I want I want to see what you what y'all say. If I believe in Jesus in my heart, what am I going to do? What are some things I'm going to do? What are some things I'm, I'm going to do? And is, is being competitive sin? No. 
it depends on what type of competition. Uh, it, it can get sinful if you have an unhealthy comp competitive um, heart or mindset. But if you have a competitive spirit um, or competitive heart um, onto the glory of God, there's no problem. Who, who we should be competing against is the enemy. Like we should we shouldn't be competing against people. You have to have a um, spiritual understanding. So you see, obey, repent, turn away from sin, grow in the faith. Pray, uh, God bless you, Amanda Vila, for the for the the ninety nine cents. God bless you. Follow him every day. How can you see submit to God? These are all ways that prove that you believe. So when people are not doing these things, can't we say you don't believe? Can't we say like you don't really believe? Because when you believe, you're gonna follow. And that following is faith. We are saved by grace through faith. So it's great. So us being able to be saved is grace. I'm gonna say it again. The ability for us to even be saved through the through the through the sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ on the cross, is grace. That's unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. We messed up in the garden. We sinned. We fell short. We're separated from God. When we sin, we deserve to go to hell. But because of what Jesus did, because of his sacrifice. We are saved by grace. That's grace. We don't deserve it through faith. Through faith. So it's the door, the door, the access to be able to, to salvation is faith. And that's following Jesus. So when we believe, we're going to follow. And that's faith. So we are saved by grace through faith. Amen. Amanda Villa, God bless you. I pray of your life right now in the name of Jesus for Amanda Villa. I pray, Father God, blessings. I pray that whatever she's praying according to your word right now that you would answer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest any man boast. So it's not the works that save us. You see, you see, some people would think, oh, it, you got to do good works to be saved. No, it's by faith. And when you have faith, you're going to you're going to automatically produce good works. See, like the Hebrew Israelites will say, oh, you got to follow the law. No, you see, that's completely wrong. That's complete. When you have faith, you're going to follow the commandments of Jesus Christ. You're going to follow God's commands, what he said we should do, which is which, what fulfills everything. I want you guys to put it in the chat. What are the two things that fulfill all the commandments? Let's see who knows their word. What are the two things that fulfill all the commandments? Love, yes. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love others as yourself. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love others. So when you love God and you love others, you're naturally going to start, you're going you're gonna to start fulfilling the commandments of Jesus Christ. You're going to start fulfilling the things that God wants us to do because of love. If love is the forefront of everything, then you, you're good to go. So what, you should, what should we do as Christians? We should study love. We should study what love is, right? 1 Corinthians 13. We should study what love is, how to love God. What does it mean, heart, mind, soul, and strength? What does it mean to love my neighbor as myself? We should love, because the closer we get to God, the more we're going to love ourselves. Because when we know how much God loves us, we'll, we'll begin to love us as well, which will cause us to love others as ourselves. So if we love God and love others, we literally fulfill all the law. And the enemy can't, the enemy can't hit us. He can't. I, I mean, I study near-death experiences a lot. And the two things that um, people say, they always hear, you know, Jesus, you know, um, uh, mention to them is the purpose of life. When they ask, when they go before Jesus, you know, a near-death experience is when someone dies legally and they leave their body. <clears throat> they leave their body. So, so, and then they go before Jesus and then they come back. And every time someone goes, they always say the same thing, that God tells them the purpose of life is to love and to serve. Serve others and love God and love others. That's the, those are literally the perfect, the, that's the perfect answer to what's the purpose of life is to love. If you can love others and you can love God, you are, you, you're good to go in God's eyes. Are you going to be perfect? No, you can't be. You can't be sinless. You can't. But you can, you can grow in perfection, which is the character of Jesus Christ, but you can't be blameless and per, like, sinless. It's impossible. So how do you grow in the faith? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how do you hear God? You hear him through reading his word and you hear him through prayer. So reading the reading the word, praying, also you can hear God through another man or woman of God in the body of Christ. So going to church, worship. You see, like there's a whole bunch of kingdom principles in the Bible that outline how to get closer to God. 
And if you obey these, these things in the word of God, you will increase in faith. God will take you through tests. And as you go through testing, the Lord will continue to prune you, refine you, purify you, and he will, he will uncontrollably, you can't control it. He will use you. The more you yield to God, the, 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 the more you get closer to God, the more he'll use you. No one can stop it. Even the enemy can't stop it. The enemy won't be able to stop it because it's God who's doing it through you. So what should you do if, if, you're, part, if, you, if you're not part of a church? You need to get part of a church. The Bible says don't forsake, don't forsake the assembly of the saints. I hear this a lot. Oh, I don't need to be part of a church to be saved. You don't, but the Bible says it's a smart thing to do it. If you're not part of a church, you're probably going to get beat up in the spirit. You're like a lone ranger. You're a sheep without a shepherd. God ordains shepherds on this planet, men and women of God, who could shepherd you, who, could, who are more advanced than you in, in their walk in Christ, who know more about Jesus. Rodney, no, that's not an evil spirit. That's the presence of God. It's good to cry. The Bible actually says that he um he collects our, our tears in a jar. It's a good thing to cry. Men should cry. And not a depression cry, but a cry of, of just loving God. When God's presence hits you, man, you will cry. I'm telling you, the presence of God is real. I cry every single day, every day in prayer. If I'm not, if I'm not weeping or lamenting before the Lord and like, and just love with him or just, you know, godly sorrow, whatever it is, I'm tripping. Like, I know that I'm not, I'm in the flesh. But when the presence of God comes, I can't stop but cry. I can't help but cry. The heart and the mind is actually used interchangeably in scripture. It's a good study. Actually, at the Leadership School of Revival, that's the assignment for this week. What do you imagine when you go to the throne of grace? Ah, man, I imagine a big old throne in the spirit. And I just imagine going before the Lord and anything I ask, I'm going to receive because God loves me. Come on, let's get the likes up. Start running up the likes. Come on. Start running up the likes. I pray in tongues more than English. Is that fine? Of course. It's a good thing. Yes, we actually are um, for Arruyo. I think that's how you say it. Arruyo says, do you ever plan on coming to London in the near future? Actually, yeah, we're, we're planning that now for summertime, August. I can't wait to go to London, man. God bless you, uh, Conejo, for the $1 offering. Dallas is coming soon too. Y'all better go check my Instagram and all that stuff. I'm posting all the stuff online. The, the, the website too has all the um the different revivals we're going to be going to. Come to Lakeland, Florida. Man, Lakeland is like an hour from the church. Come over here. It's like 45 minutes. Come over here. We right up the road. People, people drive from all over to come here. People, every service... Every service, we have people coming from out of the state. If you're in Florida, pull up this Saturday. This Saturday service is going to be powerful. This Saturday service is going to be very, very powerful because um, I'm going to be teaching on one of the most, I, I believe, um, in this for this year, one of the most like profound um, topics that the Lord has shown me yet. You don't want to miss it. If there's ever a time where you were like, man, I want to come to The Rock and check it out, come this Saturday. It's going to be a good message. A lot of healing and deliverance is going to break out. Come through. And if you can't come in person, make sure you join online. We're at 346 likes. Let's get it up to 500. Come on. There's 500 of you, of you watching. Just real quick, hit that like button. Hit it real quick. Thank you, Jared, for the offering. Amen. Come on, we had 352 likes. Am I, am I right or wrong? Let me just let me re-upload it. So right now we are currently at 368 likes. Come on. Run it up and we're gonna get we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna get right into um everything going on with Ryan Gar Garcia. I'm gonna play the video. And thank you for all those who support the ministry in prayers and financially because it really does go towards revivals. We have a lot of stuff coming up soon. We're looking for our own place right now. 
We believe it's going to come real soon. But right now, um, we're renting out a church. And our church is located in Apopka. Apopka, Florida. You can check the website. It has everything you need. Everything you need. And again, I'm just letting you guys know in love. We have moderators that, that are literally moderating the chat. If you come on here with some crazy mess, they're going to delete the comment and potentially block you from even watching the YouTube live. We have an army and they're on they're 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 ready to go. So, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers, man. They mean a lot for real. Amen. A kundalini spirit is a false holy spirit. They use it in yoga and um a lot of yoga. It's a it's a it's a it's like a it's a snake spirit. Boston. God bless you, Marco, for the um the offering. When are we coming to Boston? We don't have that in the we don't have that plan right now. If you want to book me, if you want to book me, we have a bunch of people who are looking to book me. You can go on my the website and you could actually like apply for that. There's a whole process. We do things in order. Jessica, God bless you in the name of Jesus for the offering. <coughs> Wherever you guys want me to come, just make sure again, you go online and you book it. Now you're gonna I'm gonna need a spot to go to. Like the whole nine. We want to partner with ministries. We want to actually partner with ministries. So, you know, and I am coming to London soon. Um, yeah, we're, like if you guys have a, you know, a pastor, you know, or if you are a pastor, if you know somewhere with, that, you know, I can go to just show your, you know, your, your team and and um, and yeah, just go on the website and, and, and fill out the form and everything. And then someone someone will, will reach out to you. Yeah, we're actually planning on going to Toronto. There, there, to Toronto, there's someone from Toronto that actually, um, I think it was Toronto or Vancouver, somewhere in Canada that is, is booking me to come out. Gospel film works. Hey, your hair is fire. I hope you see my comment. I might be only 13. I watch and spread the gospel. Praise God, man. Come on. God bless you. God bless you, bro. Is traveling bad? No, traveling's not bad. Come on. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into this video. What we at right now? Let me see. Let me see how many likes we at right now. We're only at three ninety seven. Come on, y'all, like it up, man. Come on, like it up, like it up, like it up, real quick. Everyone just pop, 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 pop. I'm going to start up. Even though we didn't hit 500, it's all good, man. Let's get right into it. We're at 403. By the way, the Muslim mosque video is officially out. Is officially out. <laughs> People be wilding out in the comments, bro. <laughs> Someone said in the comments when, when I had the Edgar, they said, "Did you get your um? Did you get your hair your hair at a uh, at a helmet store, bro?" <laughs> they be yo Twitter finger, Twitter finger. They be <laughs> they be wilding out, but in person they don't say nothing. Quiet. They be the ones. They'd be, they'd, be in, they'd be in the back of the church. But on the internet, they can't see who I am and I can say whatever I want. That's a spirit. You need to get delivered for real. You need to get delivered. <laughs> we pray for them though, man, for real. We ain't mad at them. It's like those people who like, drive by in the car and they say something crazy and they like whip off they drive by really fast remember, remember out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so what you say be careful that's your own heart man God is good my birthday's coming up too very soon I'm going to release it now because you guys are live. You guys, you guys are special, right? Listen, the EP's dropping, Sanctified. 
March 16th on my birthday. Yes, 316. March 16th, the EP Sanctified is dropping on all music platforms. And we're dropping a music video that's going to be very powerful that y'all don't, don't want to miss. And man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. Someone said finger flexing. <laughs> they, they be flexing with their... Uh, what's, what's, what's the, I'm not going to say it. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm on the internet. This is everyone seeing it around the world. So I got to be careful. Hey, John 316, right? The gospel. My birthday's on the gospel. Come on. God knew what he was doing since the beginning. Devil tried to kill me. I was born I was born a preemie months before I was supposed to be born. The devil tried to kill me and God turned it around for his glory. Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. All right. So we're going to watch this video. Um, let me put the reaction screen on. We're going to watch this video from the Breakfast, Breakfast Club that I saw. That pretty much gives the outline of everything that's going on with him. From what I know about Ryan Garcia, he's a professional boxer. Um, he's young. I believe he's Mexican. Um, he believes in Jesus. He believes in Jesus. He's, a, he's you know he's a little, a little you know like you know he God's 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 working on him. God's working on him. But he he professes his beliefs in Jesus. He believes. He says it. He, says, he believes in Jesus. You know, he uses some words that I'm like, okay, like he's he's being mentored, he's being discipled. You can tell he's newer in the faith, but he believes in Jesus and he has a platform. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say something before I start this video. Y'all do not understand how hard it is for certain people who come from the world and come to Christ with a platform. They get hit extra hard, <laughs> extra hard because the devil wants to kill them because they have influence. When you have influence, the spiritual warfare goes to a whole nother level. I'm telling you this from my own personal experience. Before I had influence, the spiritual warfare was crazy. I ain't gonna lie, because I came from witchcraft and all that. But man, it definitely did take another, uh, take it up another few levels when you know the influence came with social media. So when it comes to Ryan Garcia, we have to have grace. We have to pray for him. Um, we're not here calling him a demon, saying he's unsaved. We are. We are not who to judge. We're just. We're just. You know, I saw people were saying he's going crazy and all these things, but I want I want to talk about it. Is he really going crazy? So we're gonna play this um this eight minute um video from the Breakfast Club. I might stop in between, but let's get it. We're not gonna again. We're not judging him. No judgment zone. We ain't judging Ryan Garcia. You know, he's a he's a he's a young young man of God. He's young. He has a huge platform, millions of dollars, and I ain't talking about two million. I'm talking about a lot of millions of dollars. He's he has a lot of money. And just think about it. When you have that type of fame, that type of money, that type of success in the world, man, that spiritual that spiritual warfare might must be crazy. Must be crazy. So hallelujah. Let's get right into it. Y'all ready? Ryan Garcia says that he has proof Illuminati and Bohemian Grove are real. So uh, Ryan Garcia was recently speaking to Andrew Tate. So he, so he was speaking to Andrew, Andrew Tate about how he has proof that Bohemian Grove and the Illuminati is real. If you know about Bohemian Grove, all those kids that were being um, like raped and the craziest, stu the crazy stuff with the elite. If you don't know about that, go look it up. And then the Illuminati, um, <clears throat> the Illuminati is a collective. It's an organization, like um, almost like a cult, like Freemasonry, of uh, people who do who practice magic, who are in witchcraft, who are in voodoo, who are in Santeria, all that. See, when I was in witchcraft, when I was in voodoo. They used to um they used to actually practice Freemasonic and Illuminati practices like the Haitian voodoo that I used to that I used to practice. I, they actually gave me a Freemason um illu uh, illuminate uh what's it called a uh, card um what's it called uh when they uh yeah you know what I'm talking about when they put the the tape over it um they gave me a a card that they said if you keep it in your wallet you um be protected. Man, when I came to Christ, I threw that thing in the water. I remember when I threw it in the in the water in this little like river. I remember all these black crows came out of nowhere. They were going crazy. Um, so yeah, man. Um, I never really got into Freemasonry. Um, I got asked to be a Freemason multiple times from friends in the world, and um, I thank God I never did it. Um, he kept me away from it. But yeah, Freemasonry, Illuminati, all these things. It's the same thing. It's a collective of people who do witchcraft, blasphemy of God. It's a cult, secret order organization. They want all they want is money, power, fame, success, all that stuff, sex. 
It's, it's, the, it's the enemy. It's Baphomet. It's the devil. It's, it's Satan. So let's continue. And an ex-face, um, he opened up about some experiences he had with the Illuminati at Bohemian Grove. Um, backstory, Bohemian Grove is an Elks club for the rich, a fraternity party in the woods, a Boy Scout camp for old guys, complete with an initiation ceremony. Um, and to so the Bohemian Grove is, a, is, a, is an initiation place. It's like a Boy Scout place for old guys. Warned him that people might not believe him because of his mental health issues. Um, Andrew also said that he needs to tell a cohesive story from start to finish and provide proof for people to believe him. But this is what he spoke to Andrew about. They held me down and they made me watch little kids get raped. I don't give a f anymore. Bro, they f took me to the f woods, bro, and they f tied. I'm not f joking, bro. I have proof, bro. I don't give a f bro. I'll f show you every f video you could ever believe. Bohemian Grove is real. They tied me down and they made me f watch, dog. Yes, I lost it. They're raping little kids. You know the higher elites, bro. You already know who they are, bro. You know they the path they're going down dangerous. They can't touch me. I'm a god. You have proof of this on your phone? Yes, of course I do. They rape me, right? I was two years old. They raped me. I have proof of that too. At the right time, I'm gonna do it. They're already calling me to tell me to stop. I've already had a meeting with them. Bro, well, I want you to know that either way, I'm praying for you, and I hope that. Thank you. Yeah, so this is like an interview with Andrew Andrew Tate where he said like he got raped and he's seen it. Like, do I know if it's real or not? I don't know. I don't know, but let's let's continue. You know, and I, and I, mean, I don't give a f bro. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. like when you see people going through mental health issues and, they, yeah. and, and other people exploit them just to push a narrative that mm -hmm. they have about uh, these conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Because this was on a platform. This is Twitter, like X space. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And as broad as that is, you know, that's where Andrew Tate was interviewing him. Um, and I do recall when he was up here, he had openly discussed, you know, at the Breakfast Club, um, his mental health issues after his fight versus Luke Campbell. He briefly spoke on losing his. So they, they, they say that he has mental health issues, right? And look, being, again, like with that much success, fame, and money, and all that stuff, I can see how in the soul, right, you get attacked. Because. When you have that type of influence, you're valuable either to the kingdom of God or to the kingdom of Satan. I hope you all know this. There's an actual anointing of influence that a mantle that you can receive. And these mantles that people receive, even at birth, you know, they're predestined for influence. The devil can take that and use that person. The devil can't do nothing unless he can unless he can do something through a person. That's why demons want to enter bodies because they want to they want to move and maneuver and get and let and their will to be done. That's why even. Jesus says, what, is, what does Jesus say? The kingdom of God is where? It's not over there. It's not over there. It's inside of you. So when the Holy Spirit fills you, that's the kingdom of God filling you, a deposit from heaven. That's heaven filling you. And now God can use you for his glory. And someone with influence in the world that comes to Christ on fire for Jesus, like truly sold out, like baptizing the Holy Ghost in fire, like really like about the kingdom can be very influential to win souls and expand the kingdom. So in this last hour, God is winning a lot of people to Christ from the world. It's evident. He's bringing them all in with crazy testimonies, with influence, with like famous people, with money. And he's bringing them in so that they can be used for his glory. So let's continue. His mind when he sat down with us um, last week, actually. Usually I can get past things because I'm mentally strong, but this one, was, it was like, nope, you're not getting up today. Damn. Mm -hmm. So it was depression? It was everything. I thought I was losing my mind. I, was, I can't remember shit. I'm like... I was like, there's no way I got hit that hard. It was deep, man. I mean, if I, if I was going to go. So after a fight he had, he was losing his mind. He said it wasn't just depression. It was a whole bunch of other stuff. So what is he going through? Spiritual attacks. And like, I'll tell you the real story, story of it. Like I had a supernatural spiritual experience. I, I, can, I can't even, I don't even, it don't make no sense. Was you on something? No, I don't do drugs, nothing. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just prayer and nighttime, boom, it happened. And then, then I just got depressed. I didn't know what happened. So he said he had a supernatural experience at night. He said he had a supernatural experience. And then afterwards, he got depressed because he didn't know what happened. He couldn't understand it. That sounds a lot like people who get sleep paralysis, who encounter demons, who encounter angels of light, a.k.a. demonic, like Muhammad, right, in Islam. He encountered an angel of light. Like, it could be a, it could be a, a fallen angel. Think about it. If he has this much influence, obviously, obviously, the enemy wants to hit him. Someone's saying the volume is low. Let me turn. Oh, the volume is up. The volume is up. Is the volume low? Hey, if everything's good, guys, put a fire emoji in the chat. Put a fire emoji in the chat. <coughs> put a fire emoji in the chat. If the volume sounds good. Yeah, so he's talking to, he's talking to Charlemagne. It's the Breakfast Club, which is a well-known um, radio channel. Just um, you even YouTube channel like social media. Everyone knows the Breakfast Club, especially in the hip hop scene. They get a lot of interviews with fam from famous people, and um, yeah, basically he's saying that he had a spiritual experience, like a supernatural experience, at night, you know, and like probably in his bed. And um, after the supernatural experience, he just got depressed because he didn't know what happened. Happened to me. Did you get a therapist, a spiritual leader? Like no, just one day, like I was playing poker. And I was just like depressed, drinking, and this dude comes up to me and goes, hey, can I talk to you? I'm like, and I was just like, yeah, bro, I guess. And at this time, I'm already checked out. I don't really care. And then he goes, uh, do you know who you are? I said, 
Yeah, I know who I am. And then he goes, you know, God has something for you. Like, what are you doing? Like, wake up. And then boom, I just snapped out of it. It's, it's, so he said that he uh, he was depressed. He was checked out. He just didn't care about anything anymore. He was just doing whatever. He was playing poker and he was drinking. And then a the guy came up to him and told him about God, about Jesus. And because when the guy spoke the word, the word, right, he snapped out of it. It probably was an unclean spirit that was on him, a literal demon. It's wild, right? Mm -hmm. In that one clip, he said, he started off and said, I don't drink, I don't smoke. But then mm -hmm. he said he was playing poker and drinking, and the guy came up to him. But do you think... Yeah, because yeah, that also, was afterwards, though. He was saying that he was... Oh, after that, he doesn't And when he smoke. slipped into a depression, then he was just drinking and, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. But uh, Andrew actually called him out on that spaces about that, too. He was like, are you know, are you drinking? Or he said, yo, y'all can give me a drug test right now. I mean, the, the audio was all together four minutes, but we didn't have time to put all that mm -hmm. in. Um, and then he has a, uh, an, an update that he just posted, like, a couple hours ago, um, taken to Twitter, tweets and videos. He was saying how... Um, his money is locked up and he's trying to put him in jail. You have number three? Hey guys, it's me, Ryan, coming on here to explain what's going on. I'm not in possession of my phone. I can't get access to my Instagram. My cards are locked. He said he can't get access to his phone, his Instagram, his cards are locked. And I'm just being real, I'm being real taken advantage. I personally wanted just to send out a video to the people that love me and my fans. So he said he's being taken advantage of. And family that's concerned that I'm okay. I'm not dead. I believe in Jesus. All those are locked. He said he wanted to send a video out to his loved ones and family that he's not dead, that he believes in Jesus, that he's alive. Guys, they try to put me in jail. They're blocking my cards. I can't access my money. Nobody's hitting me back. I don't know what's going on, but uh, just know I'm okay. The reason why he was saying he wasn't dead is because the very first tweet that I had looked at, they had hacked his account mm -hmm. and they had said rest in peace to him like they were trying to act like the killer. I saw that. So, yeah. Well, if he don't have access to his phone. Or uh, any of his, he said he might have access to his phone. No, he, he said he money. Yeah, he said, he said they took his phone. He said he took his phone, but he said he could use anybody's phone to put any message up there. And he said he couldn't get in his Instagram either, right? Or am I tripping? Was that his account or was that somebody else's account? Yeah, well, how you post that video? It was, it was his account. It was his. But do you think he should fight? Like, I, I think that, you know, he shouldn't be fighting if he doesn't seem like he's 100% clear. A lot of people in the comments were saying is this is way out of the fight. And they were saying, saying that was. So, what do I feel right now in the spirit? This could be. This could be real, right? This could be very real. Or it could be a way to, to pump up the tickets being sold for the fight. It could be a whole, it could be a whole made up thing, or it could be both. It, like it could literally be a, 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 both things going on. Like they're trying to get ticket sales. Cause think about it. If he's ghost doing all these things and then he comes out of nowhere and he fights, everyone's going to want to watch it. Right. But then at the same time, it could be real. It could be fake. I, I don't know. Like I feel I personally right now, I don't really fully believe that this is really going on, but you know, we're going to just, we're going to watch all the way to the end. For some weeks now. Yeah, yeah, like he's trying to take every um, avenue he can to get out of this fight. But. He's got a clear history of mental health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly something's going on. I hope mm -hmm. the brother gets the help he needs. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope he has people around him that care about his... I believe that. Like, it's mental, it's mental issues, which is obviously spiritual, right? Demonic spirits in the soul. So if he's doing this for money, that's that's demonic. Like, regardless regardless of what he's doing, if he's, if he's using the name of Jesus Christ, saying, I believe in Jesus, but everything, I'm okay, and he's acting this whole thing out... That's that's obviously manipulative and that's that's rebellious. That's witchcraft. That's that's wrong. It's a lie. Or if this is really somehow happening where he has no access to his phone, no access to his ca uh, credit cards, no access to his social medias, and he's over there like you know trying to get out of the situation, then that's obviously demonic too. So regardless, it's just wrong. Best interest and aren't just saying, well, are you are you well, well enough to fight? Because that means they just care about the bag. At some yeah. point, you got to say, you know what? There's other things that are bigger than the bag. Wait a minute. And your mental health and emotional right. well-being is one of them. But then he probably don't want to back out because everybody was saying he's trying to back out. Yeah, and then taking into account, like, he's still very much a kid. Mm -hmm. and, he, and social media definitely affects him and how he's looked at, how people look at him, and all of that type of stuff. And he's also suffered with that as well. We, we, talked, about, uh, we talked about that up here, too. And mm -hmm. he was saying, oh, I don't care what people say. But then he said that that had a big, that cares. weighed in his uh, depression cares. heavily with his fans and what other people thought about him. So. Yeah. And he's definitely going to be depressed after that Devin Haney fight because he's not going to win it. Okay, well. Even if he wasn't in his right state of mind. Okay, well, I guess we will see if they will fight or any of this. Uh, I, think, I think they should postpone that fight. Think so? Yeah. Mm. There's a, I forgot who they said. Gonna, somebody's already said they're prepared to step in if Ryan steps out. I, I forgot the guy's name. I saw it yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But that is crazy. I think I would, I will say that that last part when he was talking about his bank account being shut down and all his cars are locked up, they're trying to put him in jail, all that. That sounds similar to the Wendy story. Does. I think that... So, yeah. It's, it's crazy. I believe that what he's going through is is definitely spiritual regardless of if it's real or not. If he's actually like unable to access things now what he could what, what could be happening is that he willingly you know signed a contract to give up his cell phone give up his credit cards and social media to train and prepare for the boxing match i think i saw something a video about that too where he uh he made a decision like with a trainer to give everything up and like be on a strict regimen and and, and diet so, you know, it, it's it, regardless of what it is, you know, he could have been telling the truth. Like they took my cars, they took my social media, they took my my phone. I have no access. He's telling the truth because he willingly gave it up to train and prepare for the fight. 
which could be literally like, again, it's marketing. Now, I want to use this as a way to market Jesus. <laughs> you feel me? So Ryan Garcia is claiming the name of Jesus. Is he living the best lifestyle um, behind the scenes? I don't know. But from what I've seen on, you know, videos, you know, you know, occasionally he does curse. You know, he gets angry. He needs deliverance. Ryan Garcia needs deliverance. You know, because this if he's doing all this as a way to market for money, to get more money, obviously he might be in, 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 enslaved to the spirit of mammon. It might be that he's enslaved to the spirit of mammon. He needs deliverance. You know, he needs to, you know, get that fire to, to you know, to win souls, to want to win souls and do it the right way. You know, man, the industry, just, just the elite, Hollywood, boxing, all these things, man, they can really influence you to do things that you would never do before. I'm telling you. Like people, man, people change, man. Like Lil Nas X, you guys see how he's wilding out with all this satanic stuff. From what I heard, he wasn't even gay in high school. He came to the industry and decided to be gay to get more views and more likes and sell his music and get streams. Man, I heard about a lot of a lot of different stories about people selling out, like literally selling their soul for the money. Like, okay, but look, I'm gonna tell you something. Even if you sell your soul, you can still, you can get it right back with the blood of Jesus. You can get it right back. Anyone who sells their soul is just they're, what they're doing is they're coming in agreement with a lie. They're coming in agreement with a, a demonic contract in the spirit realm to believe that they've given their soul away. And that's it. They're, they can't you can't give it away. You can't you can't say I'm going to give away my soul and I have control over that. You don't even have control over that. God has control over all souls. But what you can do is put your faith that you did sell your soul Put your beliefs in some demonic doctrines, come in agreement with something in the spirit, put so much faith in it that your grace period eventually ends. Everyone has a grace period on earth and that you do end up going to hell because you're separated from God. But even for the people who have done rituals and done all these things and they sold their soul, they can still say, Jesus, I believe that you're my Lord and Savior. Confess it from their mouth. Believe he rose from the dead. Repent. Turn away from, from following sin and give their life to Jesus and their soul will be, will be bought right back by the blood of Jesus Christ. All their sins will be washed. We're blood bought. That's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He died on the cross so we can be redeemed. It was his plan of redemption. Reconcile us, re reconciling us back to our heavenly father. If it wasn't for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we would not have access to heaven. None of us. Old Testament saints, New Testament saints. The only way that we could make it to heaven is having faith in the Messiah. Even the Old Testament saints had to have faith in the Messiah to come. New Testament saints have to have faith in the Messiah that came and is coming back. We put our faith in Jesus Christ. He is the only way to heaven. He's the way to heaven. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you can make it to heaven. You can make it to relationship with the Father even while you're here on earth. Look, when you get born again and you're saved, you're here on earth for sure. But you're still a pilgrim. The minute you get saved, you are now a pilgrim, not a citizen of this earth. You're a citizen of heaven. And you know you you have hope and know that you're going to heaven, man. I was reading Colossians today. I was reading Colossians and it talks about having, you know, hope in heaven, hope in what, what we're going to next. Like that's that's hope. Hope is not being able to see it, but know it's coming. Having faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things unseen. So when you hope for something, you're going to actually follow it when you believe it. Just like people who work a job, you work, you work, you know, every day you go, you go to work on time hoping for that paycheck in two weeks. You might have gotten a bunch of paychecks, so it, it increases your faith. It's the same thing in Christ. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, when you believe the gospel, because God will begin to show up in your life, begin to you know reveal himself to you. Little glimpses of heaven, of him, of Jesus, he'll begin to reveal himself to you. How he pulls you out of that situation, how he came through for that, how he, you know, he showed up here, a miracle there, a miracle there. And when he starts to reveal himself, your faith begins to increase. When you read his word, your faith begins to increase. When you pray, your faith begins to increase. And you and it's like that paycheck, right? Every two weeks. But now instead of monetary paycheck, it's that faith paycheck, that currency. Currency of heaven is faith. And you begin to increase in faith and you're able to go through more spiritual battles. Putting your faith in God. Trusting in his word. Trusting in his power. Trusting in his deliverance. Trusting in his healing. Trusting in who he is because you know him. You love him. You have a relationship with them. When I hear people say, oh, I'm struggling with this sin and I can't overcome it, right? <coughs> In the chat right now, if you're struggling with a sin, if you know you're struggling with a sin, I want you to put the sin that you're struggling with in the chat. I'm going to give you the breakthrough to that sin you're struggling with right now, right now. 
If, if you're if you're studying, if you're, if you're struggling with this sin and you're like, man, someone said, how can you talk more about the grace period? It's a grace period that only God knows. God gives us all grace periods of how long we, li we live on this earth. God knows. We don't we don't we don't know this. God is the one who allows death. He's the one that allows people, you know, to, to go to. He permits it. He doesn't want people to go to hell, but he can permit it. Everyone has a grace period and only God knows. He has mercy on whom he chooses. It's it's up to him. He knows more things than we can ever know. So I see all these things, vanity, self-righteousness, debt, cursing, fornication, idols, lust, judgment, laziness, marijuana, greed. Okay, I see all these things. First and foremost, that's great that you guys are putting it in the chat. That's so important because that's acknowledgement of your sin, which is confession, right? And the Bible says when you confess your sin to Jesus, he's faithful to wash and he's faithful and just to wash away all unrighteousness. So this is good that you're confessing these things. Anger, emotional emotional pain, laziness, pride, pharmakia, alcohol. This is good. Gambling. This is good that you guys are releasing it. Now, repentance is, cha is changing your mind, turning away from this sin, recognizing that it goes against God. And because you love him and you know him, you're just, you're done. And God bless you, Devin. Devin Harris for the offering of 499. God bless you. Um, so when it comes to ma like masturbation offense, how do you overcome this sin? I'm going to give you the answer. You cannot dodge sin in your own in your own might and strength. So in your own strength and might, you can't be like, I'm going to overcome this sin by myself. You can't. You can't. Think about it. In the world, I was wicked, right? I used to drink. I used to fornicate, porn. Everything you guys are mentioning, I did it. Gambling, selling drugs, doing drugs. I mean, lying, cheating, stealing, manipulating, um, gossiping, all of these things I did in the world to a high degree. So how do I come to Christ and all these things? I turn away and God begins to deliver me and I stop him. How did I stop the adultery? How did I stop? Shout, shout out the child of God, 87. God bless you. How did I stop the anger? I was very ang angry. I had rage. I had murder. I had depression. I had suicide. I had all these demons. How did they? How did I? How did I grow into who I am now to be able to overcome these things? And I'm still overcoming as I grow, right? How did I become an overcomer? It was through relationship with God. So when I came to Christ, I truly surrendered. And in my mind, I literally repented. In my mind, I made a free will decision and said, God, I'm done. I don't care how hard it is. I'm done. I'm turning away. I need you. And I began to pray. I began to read his word. And as I began to pray and read his word and grow in relationship with him, go to church, watch YouTube videos on sermons, um, pray for deliverance for myself, watch different ministers and on other faith. As I began to do these things, I began to get delivered. I literally began to get delivered and healed. And what seems so impossible before began to become easier. What did I do also early on that helped me? I went out and I evangelized. I never even knew what the, the word evangelism meant. I never even knew what it meant. I never even knew that what I was doing was evangelizing. But what I did know is that I had an encounter with, with the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus encountered me in my apartment. The presence of God smacked me down. The power of God. I got delivered. I, got, I, I, I encountered his love in a way that I never experienced, right? Demons came out of me. I spoke in tongues, right? All these things happened. And I'm like, what is going on? It was like my heart and my mind completely shifted. The desires that I had just changed. I was like, I don't want to do this stuff no more. It was like, I went from like, no, I went from believing that I had to do these things to survive to, I don't care and I'm willing to risk it all. And was it hard? Yes. The enemy was ministering to me too. Oh, you're, you're, you're going to go broke because you're not selling drugs anymore. Oh, you're, you're going to, um, you're going to go back to porn and fornication. You can't, you can't be celibate because when I got saved, I had to separate, God bless you, Grady, um, Cabrera. I had to separate from my girlfriend who was pregnant with my first child, seven months pregnant. So I had to separate and it was hard. I'm like, I'm, the enemy's telling me, you really gonna, you really gonna stop f having sex for the rest of your life? You don't want to marry her. She's not saved because she wasn't saved. She wasn't. And I knew that I couldn't be unequally yoked. But what did I do? I had faith. I said, God, you're, you're real. You're the highest power. So this, this was my mentality. If you're real and you're the highest power, two things are going to happen. 
I'm going to find out that you're very real because I'm going to keep on following you and I'm going to do what needs to be done and I'm going to keep on growing in the faith. Or I'm going to seek you with all, I'm going to seek you with everything I got. I'm going to, I'm going to do everything I can and realize that maybe it wasn't Jesus. But because of the encounter I had, I knew it was Jesus enough to keep on going. So I repented from everything. I turned my mind away from the porn. He delivered me. Turned my, my mind away from the Hennessy. I used to drink all the time. Since 17, from the age of 17 to 29 years old, I got drunk at least two to three times a week on average. I went from being that person to being completely done. I, I was selling hundreds of pounds of weed. I gave up the marijuana. People owed me thousands. I'm talking about people had tabs. They owed me 30,000 here, 10,000 here, this much of money. I said, look, keep the money, give it to a church or give it to the homeless. I was like radical. Like God, you're going to come through because the Bible says that you'll take care of everything. Bet you're going to come through and God showed up. Was it easy? Did it, was it, was it, was it like the next day that everything was great? No, the warfare actually began. I had to burn all the witchcraft. I burned all the, got rid, threw, threw away all the pounds of weed. I think I had like 15 bags of marijuana pounds. I remember like, like on me, threw it in the garbage with all the vacuum seals, all the vapes. I had hundreds of vapes, threw them away. I had, I had jars of oil that you make the vapes with, like worth thousands of dollars, just threw it away. And I heard the enemy saying, oh, why don't you sell it? And then, and then you can stop. You know, all the witchcraft. Why don't you go try to return this and do this? And, and I was like, no. I even had I had the unk, a, a 22 karat gold unk chain. And I, I heard the enemy say, oh, you can go pawn it. And I said, no, I'm not going to pawn it because then someone else will buy it. I'm burning it. I got rid of everything. I was on some radical stuff. I even started getting rid of designer clothes that I didn't have to even get rid of because designer's not demonic. But I was on some like... I don't care. Boom. I don't care. Boom. I'm throwing, I'm getting rid of everything. Lord, I love you. I was on some radical stuff because of how powerful the encounter was, his presence. And then the Lord kept showing up and then I started to evangelize. So I started to tell people about my encounter, my test. I didn't, I didn't know the Bible says it's the testimony of the saints and the blood of the lamb that overcomes the enemy and that we're not supposed to love our life unto death. I didn't know this. I, all I had was one woman of God, powerful woman of God named Sharon. God bless you, mama Sharon. I love you for watching. She's a spiritual mother to me. She she actually baptized me. She brought, God used her to bring me to Christ, um, including a, a lot of other people. If you go watch my testimony, but she was the main person who stood, who stood there, who stuck with me, who discipled me, who prayed for me, man, to just really like help me get, help me, help me in my process. Everything she would tell me, you know, this, that, this, that. I was like, bet, bet, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And man, that's all I really had because I, I didn't know the Bible, but I began to read. So I would spend hours a day reading the word, praying, consecrating to God. I started fasting, getting more deliverance, got healed of a disease I had for nine years after being a few months in the faith. When that happened, my faith was like, like went past the roof. I was like, oh, I, I was doubting it. I'm like, did I really just get healed? I had this thing for nine years. I don't got to take medicine. I was like, no way. Then I started thinking in my mind, maybe because I stopped the alcohol, it went away. Maybe that's the reason. And I started doing research and it has nothing to do with that. What I had was a genetic disease that was impossible to cure. It was just genetic and you have to deal with it for the rest of your life. And there was a surgical option that wasn't even 100%. It was like a 50 or 50 or 40% chance that I could be healed. It wasn't even guaranteed. So God completely healed it. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Then he started to heal me of internal wounds. That was the deeper thing. The unforgiveness that I had for people. The depression just left. The anger and the rage. I remember a man of God, an apostle, laid hands on me one time <clears throat> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a house service we had. He laid hands on me. And I remember I, that's, I felt the Holy Ghost hit me like hard. I fell out. I fell back. And I started, I was shaking like a demon. He was, he was a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very mature man in the faith. And he was just ministering to me, casting the devil out of me. It's okay. I command every unclean spirit, real soft. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. And he just laying hands on me. And I'm like, bro, what is that? God bless you, Elisa Guzman. And I'm like, man, God, what's going on? And I, and I remember I was, uh, I started crying. <laughs> I started coughing up. And I'm like, and I stop and I'm like, yo, what was that? And this is already being saved for a few months. He said that was a spirit of rage. You just got delivered from a spirit of rage. And he ended up becoming my spiritual father in the faith, right? Um, one, of, one of the fathers in the faith that I um, that mentors me. And I was like, wow. Then I began to get ministered to by um, another mentor of mine at the time from the spirit of rejection. So God sent people in my life to help minister to me. And it really fast-tracked me quick because I was hungry. I listened. 
I, I, I knew the Bible said, don't forsake the assembly of the saints. So even during COVID, I'm going to house church. When the building shut down, I was going to the house churches, still in the field during COVID evangelizing, still speaking in tongues under my mask. Any chance I, I got, I would take off the mask because I didn't believe in that crap. St st still don't. I'm not going to even say the word to what it was. I, I kind of already did. I hope it doesn't mess up the live stream. But anyways, man, it was crazy, man. Like it just lit up my fire and it had, the fire hasn't gone out. It's only increased. I'm still on fire for God. I'm still on fire for God. It's been four years and I'm still on fire for Jesus, still in love with him. And look at what the fruit of what God has done in my life from true faithfulness through obedience, through just loving God, through seeking him daily. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, it's real. So some of you are saying, how do I overcome the sin? Repent. In your mind, make the free will decision to say, God, I'm done. When you turn away, now that you've repented, rely on his power. And partner with the Holy Spirit. So the action that you need to take is seeking him. Reading his word, praying, joining a church, worshiping. Don't be a lone ranger. You're going to have to separate yourself. Some of you are like, man, I got friends. I love them, and, but they smoke all the time. The Bible says you got to separate yourself from amongst them, man. You got you to separate. I lost everybody, bro. Everybody. All my friends, my family, everybody. I'm saying this for real because this is my testimony. I lost everybody. All I had was my wife and my firstborn child. And then eventually, a few months down the road, Kevin, the video guy, the guy, Deacon Kevin in our church, he's actually my brother-in-law. He's actually my wife's full blood brother. And I told him, I said, hey, man, I want you to shoot a music video with me at 15 years old. He was 15. I said, bro, I want to shoot my first music video. I don't I don't know how to do it, but let's go let's go get a use my phone. And then we used the phone. I was like, hey, this ain't going to work. I went to Best Buy and bought like a little camera. And he started editing the video and he, he stayed at my house for the weekend. And he hasn't left since four years down the road, still lives with us. 19 years old, on fire for Jesus, man, a true man of God. But this, but this, but that's all I had. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a whole bunch of friends. I didn't have all these things. God started introducing me to people, but even the people, even the people that God introduced me to, you know, in the faith, I, I didn't really click with everybody. I loved them. They're my family in Christ, but, I, but personality wise, I didn't have like those friends, right? Like those, like I call you, we hang out. Like I didn't have that. But I trusted in God. And what did God do? What did God do? God saved my blood brother. He's on fire for Jesus now. God saved one of my close friends in the world that I used to sell drugs with, who's also at this church, a leader of this church. Name is His name is Dro. God saved my mother. God saved my father. Biologically, my, my mother and father who thought they, that, 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 that they were saved and everything was good, but they realized they needed to get saved. God, God started saving people and other families. I started having new friends. And I, I prayed and I said, I remember I prayed one time. I said, God, I want to have a ministry and save people who are like me. People who come from the streets, from witchcraft, people who are younger, people who come from like the hip hop scene, from the clubs, from all these things. I was like, God, I want to save people like that. And God showed me a vision one time. I was in a house church meeting. He showed me a whole vision of what was going to happen. He showed it to me. And I'm sitting there like, man, this is crazy. You know, how is this going to happen? And I just said, God, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it. So I started evangelizing and then God literally just began to do things, show me things, teach me things, take me through, take me through processes. And now I'm, I'm, at, I'm at where I'm at now. So if God can do it for me, why can't he do it for you? The question is, are you willing to surrender? And guess what? Surrender is a daily thing. Every day, are you willing to surrender something to God? Every day. Right now, it might be the, 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 the sin, right? Like the lust, the fornication, the weed. Give it up today, guys. God forgives you. If you confess it to him and you, and, you, and you say, God, I realize I have this, have godly sorrow, which means true conviction, like, God, I'm done. You do that. You say, God, I'm done. And you surrender, meaning you take that thing, you throw it away. Some of y'all got weed, vape. I'm going to say this. This is another big one. People love to vape. Can you vape as a Christian? Can you? Yeah, you can vape as a Christian. Is it a sin? Yes. Because you're killing your temple. You know that vaping is not good for you. It's worse than cigarettes. So you're harming your temple. Can you vape as a Christian? You can, but that can open an open door to the enemy, 100%. So you, some of you need to give up, give up the vapes today, the alcohol, the cigarettes, the weed, the coke, the crack, the alcohol. Some of y'all are in a relationship with a girl or a guy and you know you shouldn't be in it. 
You need to cut that relationship off. Tell them, God bless you. I'm seeking God. You should too. Don't try to go save them. Don't try to do the whole girlfriend, boyfriend thing as a Christian when you know you're, you're lusting and you're in fornication. Grow in the faith first. Mature in the faith so you can get to that point to where you can court, which is a whole nother process. Go learn about it. If y'all want me to do a teaching on courtship, put a fire emoji in the chat. Put a fire emoji in the chat. How many people we got online right now? Hallelujah. Let's get those. Okay, we got 765 people, 654 likes. Hey, start start smashing the like button. Let's get it to a thousand. Let's get it to a thousand. I'm gonna te I'm gonna do a full teaching on courtship. I'm gonna get some more teaching. I'm gonna start going live. If y'all want me to start going live more often, put the eagle emoji. Put the eagle emoji. Y'all y'all know I love the eagle, the eagle. I'm gonna start doing more live teachings again. I've been really consecrated to the Lord. I'm not gonna front again. I do not run my social medias. I do not edit these videos. We have a full time staff. A team that works alongside of me again alongside of me not for me alongside of me and we push this gospel to the nations and win souls together and they're behind the scenes you can't really see them but trust me they <laughs> without them this could not be done but anyways um uh, i don't run my social medias i don't post i don't do none of that they do because if i did i'd, I'd go crazy because social media is crazy i literally i literally delete the apps from my phone and I, I might upload them, you know, I mean, download them every like one or two days just to check and then get off real quick just to make sure that things are being posted correctly. But I don't I'm telling you right now, I don't I don't mess with that stuff because if, if I if I was to it, 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 it gets crazy. Some of y'all be posting the craziest stuff, comments, all that. I said I say that to let y'all know that I live consecrated to the Lord. So I'm constantly praying. I'm constantly in my word. I'm constantly evangelizing. I'm. I'm discipling. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a senior pastor at the, at the ROC, um, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. I, we got an online ministry. If you want to, if you want to grow with me, I'm going to say this right now. If you want to grow with me and you truly want to like learn from me, the best way is to get into the leadership school of revival straight up. The way to get into in there is to take the, is to join the community, the ROC community. It's $1 a month. Now, once you get in there, you get into the, the big community, then you can join the Leadership School of Revival. And it's literally $10 a month, which is super cheap. And and you get on and you um and I do I do weekly Zoom calls. So I do weekly lives. Um we have we have courses like the community, the ROC community has a course. The um Leadership School of Revival has a course, I mean courses coming soon. Every Monday we get on live. Um I speak to people, pray for people, we get active. I give assignments, we te I teach, I pray for deliverance, all that stuff, healing, and we, we are a family. And what we're doing is we're actually training up leaders to um to lead revival teams all around the world. So this 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 vision is going to go all around the world. The ROC is going to be everywhere in your local city. So the only way that that can happen is if you join. Someone saying, I can't join, page isn't available. Um, I think Nina just posted it. If Nina, you could post it again. I'm gonna start getting more active. I'm gonna start getting way more active on um with more lives. I'm gonna start getting active again. Um I had to take a little break. I've been consecrating for about like, you know, almost a month and some change. Just really been just been deep in the presence, man. All, we gotta live a consecrated lifestyle. I'm gonna say this straight up. If you know you've been on social media too much, take a week off. Take a week off and just delete the apps. Like literally delete them. You don't gotta delete your account, just delete the apps from your phone and just begin to read and, and pray the same amount of the same amount of time that you were praying that you were spending on social media spend it in time in, in your word spend it in prayer give it to god that, that that's a real fast you know sacrificing something that you know is keeping you is is, is is distancing you from your relationship with god and get right with jesus get right with him bro we're in the end of times we got to stay close to him man the, the, the wickedness that's coming over this this world man is crazy it's crazy. It's a great separation happening. The lukewarm stuff, the Laodicean church, they're going to have to repent. This lukewarm stuff has to stop. You can't be saying, oh, I'm going to church. I'm, I'm a Christian. But then you're living a whole nother way. You see, when people are, are sent, when people say they're a Christian, I'm going to say this right now. When people say they're born again, when they're a born again Christian, when someone believes that they're saved, right? 
but their fruit, their work show otherwise, right? Where, where they're willingly practicing fornication, willingly practicing sin, drinking, smoking, willingly cursing, gossiping, not loving, being slanderous, being divisive without no conviction. Like they think it's okay. I know that really in their heart, they don't believe they're not saved. Do we make mistakes? Of course. But when you are born again, Christian, and you make a mistake, you literally will have conviction. You will be like, dang, man, you'll have godly sorrow. You'll stop. You'll seek the Lord and he'll, he'll always, he'll always forgive you. But you can't think in your mind, I'm saved. I got baptized. I, I did the whole like repeat after me prayer years ago. I'm good. I'm going to live my life however I want to live. No, you're living in the realm of the flesh. And you know who works with the flesh? The devil. Those who are carnal are at war with God. They're, in, they're at enmity with God. If when you think, when you, when you live carnal minded, you, yo, God is, 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 is not happy. He does not, God does not like carnality. It's spirituality. We got to be walking in the spirit, not gratifying the desires of the flesh. Again, are you going to be perfect? No, but it's those who practice sin that will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, have we not casted out demons in your name? Have we not prophesied? Have we not done miracles? Who is this talking about? These are people who are believers, who, pro who, are, who, who profess to believe in Jesus, who acknowledge his power, right? Think about it. It doesn't say many will come to me and say, I believe in Islam or I believe in Buddhism. No, it says many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, I've casted out demons, prophesied, done miracles in your names, in your name. This is people who are in the church. And he will say, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity, you workers of iniquity. Those who are practicing sin. God is not an idiot. He's all knowing. So you cannot finesse God. God is not in the sky like waiting. Like he's not, he's not, he's not in outer space looking down and can't see what you're doing. You see, some people think that. They think God is in outer space and he's like looking over there and looking over there and he, and he doesn't see you and you can just get away with that and get away with that. And oh, he's not paying attention to me. He doesn't know who I am. That's you are tripping. Because God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. So God is, is all seeing. He sees everything. You can't finesse God. If you've never felt conviction, you've never surrendered. You've never believed the gospel. If you don't feel conviction, that means you don't truly believe in your heart. So what you need to do is you need to truly believe in your heart, in Jesus Christ and what he did for you. The gospel is the good news. The good news is, is that you've sinned. All of us have sinned. One sin separates you from God and sends you straight to hell if you die in that separation. You have the free will decision to separate from God and go straight to the lake of fire. It's up to you. God doesn't force nobody to love him. God does not force anybody to follow him. God does not force anybody to believe the gospel. The gospel is not forced on nobody. It's only an invitation. An invitation to that, that amazing banquet, that feast that we're going to all have in heaven when, when, when you believe in this gospel. Very simple. You've, you've sinned once. Once you met, we, We've all sinned. We've all sinned a million times, right? Many times. One sin separates you. Now, how do you come back to God? If one sin separates me from God, right? Think about that. One sin separates me from God. How do I come back to God? There's only one way. It's believing in the one who is sinless. The one who is sinless is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the fullness of God bodily. He's the, 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 he's the image of the invincible God, the book of Colossians chapter 1 talks about. Jesus Christ is the physical revelation of God because God is an all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere-at-once spirit. Now listen to me. This message, I'm, I'm going to bring the mic closer to me because it's about to get real. I feel the Holy Ghost. This message might save your life because this is the message you probably never heard in some mega churches or in some churches that it's just a sermon and good music and lights and, and fog and you go home. This is the message that needs to be preached in every single church. I feel the Holy Ghost. This is the message. And this is the message I live by. It's called the gospel. The gospel is the good news. Everyone in the chat put good news. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to spit flames right now. Put good news in the chat. Put good news. So what's the good news? The good news is very simple. You've, you've entered this world as a spirit. You came into a, a body. You lived, right? You, you're living. You, you, you grew. And you sinned. All of us have sinned. There's an age of accountability where we recognize what sin is. We sin. That one sin separates us from God. How did sin come into the world? Through Adam and Eve. What happened with Adam and Eve? 
Adam and Eve in the garden, they sinned. They sinned. They were living in perfect. Now listen to this. Adam and Eve, you heard the story. You might think it's fake. It ain't fake. It's not cap. It's real. They were the first two humans. They probably looked like avatars. They probably were healthy, tall, big, strong because there was no sin. So there was no corruption of the body. They were living the way God intended for us to live. God never had plans to put an expiration date on our body. He never intended for us to have death. He never intended for us to have depression. He never intended for, for us to have anger. He never intended for us to have sickness. These things happen because of our own free will decision. Did he know they would happen? He knew, but he did not want us to be like robots who would love him because like love him forced. He didn't want to control. So he sent us. We were spirits in heaven. The Bible talks about it. He knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. So what does that mean? Before the sperm cell and the egg ever came together and created a light, scientifically proven, right? Before it ever created a light, before we were ever formed in our mother's womb, we knew him. How do we know him? In heaven. We knew God because we come from God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Where does, that, where does our spirit come? From God. Where does our spirit go back to? Goes back to God. When we die, the book of Ecclesiastes talks about that. So we were spirits in heaven when we were given assignments. We were given assignments on what we were going to do on earth. We made the free will decision to come down. The minute, the minute our mother and father, right, the sperm and egg cell collide, boom, the spirit enters soul, body, everything at once, boom, we're triune beings. Our spirit comes from God. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. Our flesh is obviously our body. It's our earthly body suit. That's when we, we began to get knitted in our mother's womb. Book of Jeremiah talks about that. He knew him before he was formed in his mother's womb. He knew all of us before that. So we come into this world, we're birthed into this world under a curse. What's the curse? The curse is sin. The curse is death. The curse is a corruptible body. How does this happen? Because of Adam and Eve. It's a generational curse. Because in the garden, God had them perfect. Their body, soul, and spirit was perfect. Because they were one with the Holy Spirit. They were one with Jesus. God had plans for them to be fruitful and multiply. God had plans for them to, to have dominion over all animals, creation, the sea, the fish, everything. God had plans for them to expand his kingdom here on earth. That's what God was doing. He was expanding his kingdom here on earth. But what happened? He told them, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat from every tree. Do whatever you want. Don't eat from that tree. Eve got deceived from the, ser the serpent. The serpent, Lucifer, in that snake came to her and convinced her. You can be like God if you eat from that tree. You could be like God. Eat from it. She fell victim to it. She went. She ate. Then she convinced her husband to do the same thing. When they did that, that's when they lost relationship with God because they sinned. That's when death was allowed into the world, the spirit of death. Now, because of what they did, there's an expiration date on their bodies. Now that now they're going to have to die, they're going to have to go through emotional stuff because now they know good and evil before they knew no evil. They did not know evil before. That's what that tree was for. He said, don't eat from it because he knew if they ate from that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were going to know what evil was like God. And that's when they, they, they wouldn't be able to bear it. Because when you know what evil is, it's impossible not to sin. All they knew was good. God programmed them. Listen to this. God programmed them to only know good. I've never said this before. This is the Holy Ghost. God programmed them to know only good. But the minute they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is free will, they did evil because they wanted to be like God, pride. So they made it. The all they knew was good. But then they decided, I want to be like God. Boom. They sinned right there. They ate from that tree. God gave them free will. They allowed death. God allowed death into the world. Sin. He permitted it because they made them. They, it's a spiritual law. That if they decided to be like that, they, all this stuff would happen. And now, because of them, we are generations down the bloodline. We are we all are born into this world with that same nature, the corruptible body, the sinful nature, where our flesh causes us to sin. There's demonic spirits and angelic spirits all throughout the spirit realm on this earth. And the demons cause us to sin. The, the angels want to keep us away from sin and keep us close to God. It's a war going on for souls. Those are our brother in arms, our brothers in arms. And we're going to we're going to eventually judge the angels one day. So we're in this physical realm as spiritual beings in a corruptible body. So how do you get saved? So you go your whole life thinking that, you know, it all right. Being born into a family, you know, going to school, doing all these things, learning this, learning that, thinking that this is life. And then eventually, as you get older, 
you know, you begin to sin. Then you begin to sin and see the product of sin. You start to experience things like bullying, suicidal thoughts, depression, anger, lust, all these things that you're, it's, it's different. You're not used to it, right? And then what happens? And God bless you, um, me a second for, uh, to, for, for subscribing as a member to the YouTube channel. And all you guys can do that too. You guys could subscribe as members. I, I forgot I put that up. You guys could um, subscribe to one of the memberships. God bless you. So we all we all are raised like living our life. And then eventually we realize like, man, like what's the purpose of this life? We start going through all this trauma, all this stuff. And it's the product of sin. Some of you wonder, why did I go through this? Why do these people go through this? It's because of sin. It's because of sin. Sin from your ancestors, sin from other people, sin for over regions, sin over cities, countries. Sin is, is what causes everything. It allows demonic spirits to be in power to let things happen. So it's sin. That's the answer for all of the things that we do not enjoy in life, which is which is sickness, depression, all these things. It's sin. It's, it's gratifying the desires of the flesh. Now, the desires of the flesh are what? They're carnal. They're at enmity with God. They're against God. Because the carnal things that people like to do, that we like to do, is the things that Satan provides to us. Satan is one spirit who could only be at one place at one time, but he has a whole demonic kingdom. And they've created all these things to lure us in, to go against God because they know they're going to the lake of fire. They know they're going to, they, they're, they know they're, they're, they're done. They're always, see, demons are always scared that Jesus, that Jesus is coming back soon. So they go all out. They're always, in the, they're always wondering or they're always thinking he's coming back soon. That's why the Bible says even demons believe and they tremble. They tremble at the name of Jesus because they don't want him to come back because when he comes back, it's over. It's finito. They can't repent. They can't. It's done. They got casted out of heaven, a third of the angels. They knew that God was God and still tried to go against them and they got casted out of heaven. There's no repentance for them. We're born into this world not knowing God and then God reveals himself to us. So the devil in the satanic kingdom, their job is to bring us to the lake of fire with them at the end of the, at the end after judgment. And the angels want to save us. They, they minister to us. Other Christians minister to us. So it's a whole war going on for souls. Everyone put in the, in, in the chat, put souls. It's souls. It's a war for souls, my brothers and my sisters. It's a war for souls. So we're separated from God after one sin. We're, we're in a state a fallen state and then what happens so then that one guy comes to you and preaches to you on the internet on youtube then that one guy the one woman a guy at the, down the road gives you a bible and, and prays for you you see god begins to draw you in the bible says no one comes to the father unless the, no, no one comes to the son unless the father draws him in so when you begin to seek i believe personally like with me the reason the father started to draw me in right is because i began to ask questions so i began to wonder what is the purpose of life that was my main thing that's why I ask it with every, um, almost every interview I have with evangelism is what's the purpose of life? God bless you, Abraham Hernandez. That was the reason I did that is because I always wondered what is the purpose of life? I always wondered it. And that's what brought me to Christ. So I, was, I would always wonder what's the purpose of life? What are we doing here? What's the purpose of all this? Because I was, I was fulfilling all these goals, the money, the girls, the traveling, the cars, everything that I always wanted since I was a little kid. I'm getting it now college all these things and i'm like man like what's the purpose of all this and because i always had that that thought in my mind god bless you lloyd m jr because i always had that thought in my mind it used to torment me and i became re very rebellious i wanted to rebel because i was like man what's the purpose of this life anyways and i would rebel but i started to ask questions to the higher power i started to cry out to the higher power and i believe when i started doing that that's when the father began to draw me into the son Put me through a whole bunch of sequential events that led me to Jesus. So how do you get saved? This is the good news. You've been separated from God because of one sin. How do you come back to him? By believing in a sinless man. So Jesus, who is God, right? Just imagine an all-powerful spirit. God came into a human vessel. Remember I told you we were spirits that came into vessels? Well, guess what? God came into a vessel born into the world. God was born into the world through a body of flesh, right? Because the only way to be born into this world is to have an earthly body suit. God entered a, an earthly body suit, revealed himself as Jesus Christ, the son of God. The physical revelation of God is Jesus. The image of the invincible God is Jesus. The fullness of God bodily, Father, Son, Holy Spirit in bodily form is Jesus. 
Jesus is the way that we can physically identify God as humans here on this earth. When we get to heaven, we're going to understand deeper revelations about the Father and the Holy Spirit. We can understand it now if we seek God for sure, but I believe when we get to heaven, it'll be the fullness of the understanding. The Bible talks about the fullness of glory. Hallelujah. Everyone put a fire emoji in the chat. It's about to get real. So Jesus was born in the manger. We know the story in Bethlehem. Lived a life just like us. Went through temptation. Had to learn. He had a brain just like us. He had to poop. He had to pee. He had to eat. He had to drink. He had to go to school. He went through all the same temptations we went through. Everything. His mother and father knew he was the Messiah. Because in the Old Testament, they would prophesy about the Messiah finally coming. What he was going to do. How he was going to save the world. But the Israelites thought that he was going to come like David and be a warrior in the physical and chop off people's heads. But he didn't. He came as a servant. Lowly. Meek. Humble. He came into the world to serve. He had to go through life. He was in and out of the synagogues. And eventually, at the age of 30 years old, he got baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Why did he do it? Why did God have to get baptized? Because God, even God had to honor another man of God in order to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies. God loves honor. God loves honor and serving. Everyone put honor in the chat. H-O-N-O-R. Honor. You guys, Western... Christianity, and I believe the body of Christ period needs to learn honor because in this last, hour, this last hour, there's a lot of dishonor and division in the body of Christ, which causes curses on people's lives and their families, which is crazy. And trust me, God is a very patient God. He'll give you chance. He'll give you time to repent. But if you don't, you got to suffer the consequences. But we need to learn honor, guys. If, if there's anything I teach you guys as well as the gospel, it's honor. Learn honor for real, for real, for real. It'll bless you. It'll save your butt. So Jesus got, he got baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove and the Father spoke. That's the first time we see the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit at one place at one time. And then he went out to the wilderness, came out in power after he was tempted by Satan, never fell, never fell in, fell, fell, fell victim because he knew the word. He knew, he, knew, he knew it's written. So he beat the devil by the word of God, came out, went from city to city for three and a half years, casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead, healing the blind, cleansing the lepers. It's, it's, like, it's like modern day cleansing people with all types of diseases that were supposedly incurable. He was healing the sick, casting out demons. And he says in his word that even like, like those who believe right in the future would do even greater miracles. And that's why we, st we still see it happening today. If you watch my videos, you see it, the revivals, devils cast it out, people healed, people saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, because th those are the things that Jesus was doing. And it's still available for us today. Hallelujah. Yeah, the moderators on point, they don't play. <laughs> God bless him. I love him. So Jesus did those things to prove his, that he was a supernatural God. You see, the Bible without supernatural is pure philosophy. If you have the Bible without the Holy Spirit, you're not going to change. Bible knowledge with no supernatural will keep you bound in religion. That's how we have people today that don't believe in the speaking of tongues, don't believe in prophecy, don't believe in healing, don't believe in deliverance, don't believe in all these gifts of the spirit. It's because they have knowledge with no supernatural, no Holy Spirit. That's an actual, that's, that's actually an unclean spirit. That's actually a demon. That's a religious spirit. And the Pharisees had that religious spirit. They hated Jesus because he was moving in a supernatural power that they couldn't move to. God bless you, Jaxa. God bless you, Abu Bakar. Kamara, God bless you. In the name of Jesus. So Jesus moved in a supernatural power, moving in miracles, and the Pharisees couldn't do it. All they wanted was the power, the money, and, 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 and the control. They wanted to put yokes on people. But they were putting yokes on God's people, but they had no power. So the people weren't even changing. They were in bondage. But Jesus came to be the opposite. I'm going to serve the people. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. The same people he knew would deny him. From city to city, had no place to sleep, no place to permanently sleep because he was always on the go. He wasn't broke. He wasn't broke at all. Judas was the one who carried the money bag, the treasurer. People were giving offerings onto him all day, every day. People were giving offerings onto him all day because they were honoring him. To the point where they had, they had to have Judas hold the money bag. He knew that Judas was stealing out of the money bag, but he knew it's okay. This has to happen to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy so I can go up on the cross. He knew it. He knew it had to happen. And after three and a half years, he gave himself in to be crucified. 
But before being crucified, he had to go through extreme torment. Crown of thorns was put into his head. He was mocked, spit on, slapped, ridiculed, beat with a nine tails whip 39 times. One of those nine tails whips will cause 20 stitches per spike. That's nine times 20 is 180. So 180 stitches times 39. Do the math. The Bible says he was mold. He was deformed. He was unrecognizable when he came out of getting beat like that. And look, people didn't survive that. When you went through that type of beating, you would die. You would literally die because it was so excruciating. But he survived. The father allowed him to go through that and not die because it wasn't time. And he picked up the cross being unrecognizable. Imagine you see me and then I go into a room and I get beat so bad. I come out and you can't even recognize me. You're looking at me like, is that rich? Is that apostle? Is that him? Because of how mold, how deformed I am. That's what our Jesus went through for us. That's why by his stripes, we're healed because the physical torment he went through in the flesh never caused him to back away from the assignment because he knew that if he didn't go up on that cross, we could not be forgiven for our sins. He did it for us. He did it for you and me. He carried that cross miles, over a mile to Golgotha. He went up on that cross. He was nailed. Boom, boom. You know the story. We know it. It's real. Nailed to the cross. And then all the sins of the world from the past, present, and future. All the sins ever that, 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 and it's for those who are born again. He took all the sins of those who would believe in him, right? Born again believers. And he took it in his body, on his back. He took it on him as a sacrifice, a sacrificial lamb. The reason that he did that is because in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals for the atonement of sins. Before Jesus came, the Jews, the Israelites would have to sacrifice animals, take their blood before the mercy seat inside the tabernacle, the temple to atone for the sins of Israel on the day of Yom Kippur. It was a constant work. But no amount of animals could, could atone, which means cancel out all the sins of the world. Why blood? Because right now, if you went to the doctor and you said, doctor, I'm sick. I don't know what's wrong with me. And the doctor used all his instruments and said, I don't know what's wrong with you either. What would the doctor tell you to do? Go get your blood work because life is found in the blood. Everything's found in the blood. Everything flows through the blood. All our organs, white blood cells, red blood cells, everything, vitamins, nutrients. You need blood to live. If someone gets shot, how do they die? Do they die from the gunshot? No, they die from the lack of blood. The blood pours out. That's what kills them. So blood is life. It's a spiritual law. We know this. Blood is life. Sin is death. So for sin, there needs to be a blood sacrifice. And the ritual they had to do in the Old Testament was sacrifice the best of the best, best animals. Every single home and, and tribe had to get a tenth of their best animals. Bring them before the Levitical priests who, were, who, were, who would sacrifice them in the outer courts and bring the blood into the holies of holies. It was a ritual. But it was a foreshadowing of the Lamb of God to, who's going to take away the sins of the world. Just like John the Baptist said. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It was a foreshadowing of the perfect human sacrifice. And the only one who could be worthy in, in, in God's eyes to be a sacrifice would have to be a sinless person. And Jesus, who was born of a virgin, right, by the Holy Ghost, she was, born, she was inseminated with the Holy Spirit to, be, to have a baby, to have a seed and be born. It was a supernatural birth. He's the only one who could do it. None of us can do it. Nobody can be sinless. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yehoshua, he was perfect all the way on to death. He went up on the cross. He took all our sins. Just like I told you, the animals would atone for the sins. Jesus was the last one, human sacrifice. A sinless man who did not deserve to get beat, who did not deserve to get mocked and made fun of, who did not deserve to get betrayed, who did not deserve to go through what he went through. He went through it for us. Went up on the tree. On a cross. That's what it means, right? Just, just think about a cross. A cross is made from wood, from tree. Went up on that cross and said, Father, why have you forsaken me? The reason he said that is because when all that sin came upon him, the Holy Spirit could not be in a body that was full of sin. That's why I say the Holy Spirit can leave you. Just like in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would leave temples whenever the people would not repent of their sins all throughout the old and new testament so the holy spirit had the was with the father holy spirit and the father watched as the son was sacrificed and he said it's finished when he said it's finished he died he overcame the world the devil and the flesh 
That means the flesh, the devil, and the world never caused them to sin. The Bible says he disarmed every principality and power, made a public spectacle of them. Every demon got disarmed. So the devil had power over us before because he because of what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. The devil had power over us because we sinned. The minute in the garden we we that the Adam and Eve ate from that tree, the knowledge of good and evil, they gave their authority to Satan. Again, the minute that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they gave their authority, aka keys, to Satan. So Satan had the keys that entire time, all the way till Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died, he descended to the lower parts. He went to hell in the spirit. The spirit of Jesus Christ went and took the keys back from Satan, aka authority, the keys of death and hell. Now nobody dies or goes to hell without the permission of Jesus Christ. He took the keys back. He rose the spirit of Jesus back into his body by the power of the Holy Spirit. He rose from the dead, came out that tomb. And now the gospel is if you believe that Jesus Christ did die on that cross for your sins, that by his blood, you're washed away. If you believe in that, that what Jesus did for you frees you from sin. You believe he's your Lord, meaning you're going to follow him. Lord means master in the Greek. When you believe someone's your master, you follow them. John Carlo, God bless you. When you believe someone's your master, you follow them. It's like your boss. He's your master because you show up to work on time. You work all the way to the end because if you, you know, if you don't, you get fired. That's a master. But Jesus is the master of masters, the Lord of lords, the king of kings. You follow government laws because you don't want to go to prison. You're enslaved to the government. We all are. We abide by the governing laws of the land. But God is the one who, is, who allows anything to happen. He permits it. So if you believe that Jesus is your master, your top authority God, and you follow him, your master, your Lord, and you believe he saved you by what he did on the cross, by shedding his blood, you believe he did die and he was buried and rose from the dead. You believe he resurrected and is alive right now, seated at the right hand of the Father. He rose in his glorified body. He rose from the dead showed himself on to his disciples and then he ascended past the clouds is in heaven right now seated at the right hand of the father you see in islam they believe that he rose and is in heaven and coming back to fight the antichrist just like we do but they don't believe in the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus christ and that right there is what literally is the gospel and what keeps them away from salvation and they don't believe in and repent they, they believe in repentance but it's, it's a it's a works they, they don't know if they're going to go to heaven they don't know if they're going to make it they're just lit. They're, they're trying to do a bunch of good works and hope they make it. And they're just going to wait for judgment. They don't know if they're going to make it. But us as Christians, we know that it's not our good works that save us. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest any man boast. The minute we put our faith in Jesus Christ and the death, burial and resurrection of what he did and we turn away and we repent, which is honestly the fruit of faith. When you truly have faith, you're going to repent. So that's the next step. When you believe and you repent. You will receive the Holy Ghost, be born again, and will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And then from that day forward, it is a fight of faith. Matthew 24, 13 says, for those who endure to the end shall be saved. So it's a fight of faith. The devil wants you to lose your faith. God is going to keep increasing your faith. So as long as you stay in relationship with him, seeking him, reading your word, like I say this all the time, the essentials, kingdom principles, keep coming back. Even if you mess up, come back, come, keep coming back. He's never going to say, oh, this sin is too big. You're not worthy. No, every time you, every time there's sin, wherever sin is, grace abounds even more. Where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. So as long as you continue to follow him, even when you mess up, man or woman of God, you're going to mess up and you keep fighting and you keep coming back and seeking them and praying daily and saying, Lord, and just constantly keeping your heart and mind on Jesus. You'll endure to the end and you will inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel. How many people do we have online right now? Because we're about to do a digital altar call. 834 people just heard the gospel. Glory be to God. I want y'all to smash that like button. Start smashing it. Let's run it to a thousand. But what I want to do right now, very simple. If you know you need to give your life to Christ. If you know, God bless you, Abdul Bakar. If you know you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you know you need to surrender. If you know you have not been surrendered. Or you need to give your life back to Christ. 
Either or, very simple. You heard this good news. All Jesus says is in the Bible is Romans 10, 9. Believe in your heart. This gospel I just preached, right? Believe in your, in your, in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess from your mouth and you'll be saved. I'm going to walk you through a salvation prayer. If you believe in what I just preached in your heart and you know you need to receive the Holy Spirit, you know you need to be born again, you know you need to give your life to Christ, I want you right now to put a one, a one in the chat and only put it one time. Don't start spamming it. Because we're going to count up the amount of people who are giving their life to Christ. Put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat. Souls are going to be saved today. Hallelujah. Wow. Look at that. Mediators. Count up mediators or moderators. Put a one in the chat, family. One time. If you know you're not saved and you need to get saved, put a one in the chat. You lost your faith, Dallander. Now's the time to give your life back to Christ. It's time. Now it's time. The God that hey, to, to, to receive the Holy Spirit is very simple. It's not, it's not hard. It's just believing in the message I just preached, which is very simple. That you've sinned, you've been separated from God. And by believing in the good news, which is that a sinless man did that for you, you can be saved, and his life will become your life. His righteousness will become your righteousness, his holiness will become your holiness. And you'll be born again. Put a one. If you know you need to give your life to Christ, put a one in the chat one time. Please. Ramon Bowen, Bowden said, we sin every day. I'm going to tell you this. There's a difference between someone who sins and someone who's a sinner. Someone who sins is someone who stumbles. And the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up every single time. So what's the difference between a sinner and someone who sins? Someone who sins is someone who makes a mistake, recognizes it, is constantly before the Lord saying, God, I confess my sin. And he constantly is wiping away his sin or her sin with his blood. A sinner is someone who practices sin. That means that they're constantly doing it with no conviction, no repentance. And that right there is a worker of iniquity. And the Bible says those who practice sin will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's very simple. It's like a job. I'm going to give you the example. It's like a job. You go to a job. Let's say you're working at Target. You got two people. You got the one guy who who, who believes in and working at Target, loves it, has a passion for it, and, and they work hard and they mess up every now and then. What's going to happen? The, the boss is going is gonna to always forgive them because they, the boss knows in their heart they truly believe in Target and they're going to continue working with everything they got. Now you got the other guy. He comes to work at Target, doesn't care about the job, doesn't even want to work there. It's just going because, you know, whatever. Within a week, he's just like, you could just tell the boss knows this person don't even want to work here. What happens after a few times? They just, they end up, they end up quitting or getting fired. It's the same thing in Christ. You come to Christ and you're not for real about it and you don't really believe and you're just doing it to do it. Let's say, let's say right now you just want to do a repeat after me prayer and you think by you saying it with me, you're going to, that, that, that's all you got to do. No. By you saying you're giving your life to Christ, you're surrendering to Jesus. It's no longer you who lives, but Christ who's going to live inside of you. You are literally giving up your life for Jesus right now. This is not just, oh, I got to just say this prayer with Apostle Rich and everything is good. No. You pray this prayer, the Holy Spirit will fill you, but now you need to endure. You need to seek God. Now you're, 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 you're repenting, meaning you're turning away from following other things and you're turning to Jesus Christ. This is what this means. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because someone who believes in Jesus in their mind cannot be saved. I'm going to say it again. Someone who believes in Jesus in their mind will not be saved. That's why the Bible says you must believe in your heart. What's the heart? It's like a business idea. I'm going to give you an example. It's like a business idea. If you have a business idea in your mind right now, how many people do you know that have all these business ideas? They got the blueprint. They know the ins and outs, but they never do it. It's because they have a whole bunch of knowledge of the business. But it's the one who takes the leap of faith that actually starts the business. And that's the one who believes in their heart. Most people don't start businesses because the business idea never hit their heart. When it hits your heart, you actually take action. It's like your mother and father or the one or your son or your daughter. You love them in your heart. You don't just love them in your mind. You're not just saying, I love you, mom, because you're my mom. No, you would die for them. So that means in your heart, you love your family members. In your heart, you would you love them. You would die for them. You would ride for them because it's in your heart. 
that hits different. You got to believe in Jesus in your heart. Hold on, my wife is calling me. We're about to do an altar call. So again, if you know you need to give your life to Christ, put a one in the chat. What's up, babe? I'm on live. Is everything okay? All right, I'm going to hurry up. All right, <laughs> it's my, my, my wife saying hurry up. I got to go pick up my kids. So we're going to do this digital altar call. Y'all ready? All right. There, there go some more ones. Praise God. Only put it one only one time in the chat, please. All right. So I want you to do, to do this. I want you to put your right hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart. I'm going to lead you to Christ right now. But I want you to close your eyes. I want you to just focus your heart on Jesus. I want you to say Jesus. Say it out loud. Out loud. Don't say it in your mind. Say Jesus. Say, I believe you're my Lord and you're my Savior. Say, I believe you died on the cross, you were buried, and you rose on the third day. Say, I believe that your blood washes away all my sins. I believe you're seated at the right hand of the Father and you're alive. Say it. Say, Jesus, I surrender my heart to you. See, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to join a church or ministry. Say, Jesus, I am going to follow you. I have faith. Now say, Jesus, now put your, you put your right hand on your head. Put it because in your mind, put it right here in your mind. That's where you have to repent is in your mind. Now say, say, Jesus, in my mind, I turn away from following evil. And I turn to you for forgiveness. Say, I'm forgiven. You can put your hands down now. Now I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would fill you right now. And if you truly believe in your heart, the Holy Spirit's going to fill you right now. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're omnipresent. That means you're everywhere at once. You're all powerful, omnipotent. You're omniscient, all knowing. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, every unclean spirit, every demon to come up and come out. Every unclean spirit blocking anything in their body or their soul. Come up and come out now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill them right now. Fill them with your love, your peace, your joy, and your power. Some of you are being touched by the presence of God right now. Some of you, are, some of you guys have been experiencing God's presence. You might be weeping. You might be crying. You might be shaking. You might be throwing up, coughing. Every demon come up and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, touch them and fill them. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your glory. Fill them with heaven, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of you might begin to speak in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Open up your mouth and pray in your heavenly language. It's real. Your heavenly language is real. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And for all those who already pray, pray in the Holy Ghost, put a fire emoji in the chat and pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. If you're unashamed of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want you to pray in the Spirit of the Lord because people are going to encounter the Holy Ghost right now. The Lord knows who knows who needs to be touched. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about any religious Pharisees. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Right now, I break every contract, every covenant of the enemy over their lives. I break it by the blood of Jesus. Every demon of rebellion, every demon of rejection, every demon of sexual morality, any spirit of fear. I command you right now to be bound and come up and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come up and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now I command full healing on the body and the soul from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in the name of Jesus Christ. And the church says together, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for all for the moderators. How many souls were saved on this on this live? Come on, let me know. How many souls were saved on this live? Just waiting for the moderators. <coughs> 146 people were saved, guys. 
146 people were saved. Let's run up the fire emoji. Glory be to God. 146 people. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of souls saved, man. Praise God. Amen. He's good, man. He loves you. He wants you to follow him. You've all made the free will decision. Um, now you guys need to get baptized. Look, we have a, a service this Saturday. If you want to fly in on Saturday, you can. Or drive out. Go find a local church. If you want to be plugged into the ministry, we have a ministry online. Um, at the bottom um, or in the description of every YouTube video we have. It shows you how you can sign up. It's a dollar a month. It's a powerful community of like-minded believers where we fellowship. Come join. And then we have the Leadership School of Revival where you could join me. And I pour into you guys every Monday on Zoom live. It's powerful. I pray impartation. Which I'm training up leaders to be to be revival, revival team leaders all around the world, man. So if you want to get plugged into the international vision, sign in online. It's beautiful. And yes, this Saturday we have service at 7 p.m. I will be there preaching. I will be there preaching this Saturday. One of the most powerful messages I've ever preached. If you can't join in person, join online on YouTube, this same channel you're on right now. God bless you guys. So what we're going to be doing right now is I'm going to get off. I have to go pick up my children. I'm going to give you guys a chance to give. If y'all want to support the vision and what we're doing at The Rock, spreading revival to the nations. I mean, we have a lot of plans coming up soon. A lot of things going on. We're looking to get our own building. So we're saving up for that. We also have a, um, we're actually right now, we're, um, we're building a, a revival box truck. So it's a 26 foot box truck, box truck that's being um, decked out into a stage with lights and everything that we're going to literally drive from city to city, from state to state. So we want to have multiple of those. We're starting our Tampa, our Tampa center soon. Again, we're a young ministry of young people. So, I mean, all support helps out because I know the young people, they don't make that much money, which is okay because the Lord still provides. So I'm, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to give. For those that want to bless what's going on, um, I'm going to put the giving on and then I'm going to come back in like five to ten minutes. So if you guys want to give on to the ministry, here are the ways to give. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The Bible says if you give sparingly, you receive sparingly, you give abundantly, you receive abundantly. We're a soul-saving ministry where God's presence, power is. His hand is on the ministry. He sees you. He sees what you're giving. And he will bless you right back as long as you do it with revelation and you do it with joy. You do it with revelation and joy. You can't do it with joy if you don't have revelation. The revelation is you're not giving to me. You're giving to God through this ministry. And that's Jesus. He's God. I'm just stewarding it as a, as a, as a, as a leader within the ministry, one out of many. And man, this, this helps support the vision. We have full-time staff who are laboring with videos daily. We're, we're here every morning praying at 730 in the morning. We're, we're all together as a unit. The spiritual warfare is crazy, cause especially with digital ministry, but we're, we're covered by God. So, man, there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes that costs money. So by you guys supporting this, it does bless the ministry a lot. And we thank you for all those who pray. And if you can't, I mean, who, 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 uh, who sow, if you can't sow financially, still sow in prayers. Pray for us because it does help too. So I thank, I thank you guys for partnering with us and supporting. Again, you can become a member. I think it's like a membership option. For YouTube, you can join the school community, the Leadership School of Revival, and I'm going to give you guys a, uh, some time right now to give, and I thank you guys for everything you guys have done to partner with us.
What's up, family? If So I want to ask a question. Can you guys hear me? And if you can hear me um, and you want me to continue doing live streams regularly, like weekly, put a fire emoji in the chat. Put a fire emoji in the chat. If you want me to do live streams weekly and you want me to keep doing it, put a fire emoji in the chat and I will continue doing it. I'll pick a day and I'll commit to it. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to bless you guys. I want to come on here and preach the gospel at least once a week. It's a whole harvest field. I believe that many souls will be saved. I want to pray over the offering for everybody who gave. Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name that you bless them according to how they gave, what you put on their heart, Lord. I thank you for all the souls that were saved as well. I pray that you get them plugged into a local church, Lord, into a ministry. For those that are supposed to join the online community we have, Lord, may you put it on their heart as well. Holy Spirit, have your way in their lives. May they mature in Christ, becoming more and more like Jesus every day. I pray that you heal, you deliver, Lord, you, you sanctify your saints and continue to grow us. I bless you, King Jesus, and thank you in Jesus' name. And the church says together, say out, say out of your mouth with me, amen, hallelujah. I love Jesus, and I hope that you guys love him or do fall in love with him. God bless you and salute all end time soldiers, remnant. Again, come Saturday if you if you haven't already um, decided to come. Come Saturday. Saturday is going to be a powerful service. You don't want to miss it. Also, join our online community. It's in the description of every single video. And you could join us $1 a month and you could plug in with us. God bless you guys. Salute. In Jesus' name.